When we conduct a study, uh, allocation concealment occurs before that study ever begins. When, we want, when we're enrolling patients into the study and they become the subjects, we want to make sure that we don't know to which group they're going to be in. After we put them into the study, we can uh, blind the study, we can randomize patients, etc. So let me give you an example of how this works. And, um, imagine we're doing a study where we're doing screening mammography and we're rolling some, we, we take a group of women from our practice and we're going to enroll them into the study. Some women are going to get mammogram and some are not. So let's imagine to make it easier, we just have a list on the wall that we're going to uh, uh, add names of the uh, women as they come in. So the first woman comes in and we put her on the list and she's in the mammogram group. Then we go to the second woman on the list and she's in the no mammogram group. And we go down our list, uh, adding uh, women as they come into the study. But let's imagine there's a time at which a patient comes in and we, we look to see on the list and they're going to be added to the no mammogram group and we don't want that to happen for whatever reason. This is someone we know or for just whatever reason we want to put them in the mammogram group. So uh, if allocation isn't concealed, we can simply take her off the list and move her down to the group that um, gets a mammogram. And you can imagine if this is done over and over, we're going to end up with unbalanced uh, patients. Even though the study is randomized and even though it is blinded, at this stage we have the ability to undermine the randomization process by uh, uh, manipulating the allocation at the beginning of the study.